Have you ever stopped to think about the thrilling secrets of day-to-day modern life on planet Earth? I'm talking about tiny windows and washing machines and little holes in airplane windows. If you haven't got a clue of what I'm talking about, tag along and allow yourself to be as surprised as I was when I found out. Remember the drawer at the bottom of your oven? Maybe you've been ignoring it all along or using it to store pots and pans. Well, even though it can serve this function, that's not the only thing it's there for. The best way to use the bottom drawer is to keep your meal heated while you're waiting to serve it. Genius, right? Talking about secret doors, have you noticed that most washing machines have little flap doors at the bottom too? These doors actually serve as drain traps. It's where all the items that we put to wash together with our jeans and jackets go to. It's a type of collector, let's say, of small items. It stops them from getting into the main drain pipes and clogging them. It saves us hundreds of dollars in repairs each month. Now, who hasn't gone through the confusing task of having to measure how much pasta to cook for one serving? Well, here's the solution. The holes in the center of pasta spoons. They were actually made for measuring the exact amount of dry pasta you need for one serving. If you try stuffing wet cooked pasta through it, well, good luck with that. On a similar topic, have you ever wondered why pen caps have holes in them? Maybe you thought it was a design feature to regulate air pressure. But in reality, these holes have a much simpler and more important function – to reduce the risk of choking. Now, lots of people love to bite on their caps, and this tiny hole prevents them from choking in case they accidentally swallow a cap and it gets stuck in their throat. For kitchen lovers, there's a hidden secret right in front of your eyes that can change your life. Think pants. Now think handles. Right, they have holes in them. As it turns out, these holes were designed to hold the spoon you're using for cooking. And instead of dripping sauce all over the stove or your kitchen floor, you can place the spoon in the hole and let it drip the sauce directly back into the pan. Woohoo! Speaking of everyday items, and I was, most doorknobs are made of brass because this material makes them naturally germ-free. Unlike plastic ones, brass doorknobs are kind of magical. They can disinfect themselves without you having to clean them neat, right? Have you ever noticed that at the bottom of a measuring tape, there is a little dip? You can find it in that metallic part you need to pull on to measure something. Well, that dip is actually the exact size of a regular nail. It was designed for people to place the tape on top of a nail and use it as a support while they stretch the tape. Well, I can't wait to try it out for myself. As for the margins in your notebook, They were invented to protect people's notes from mice. No, the mice weren't copying your answers for the math quiz. Actually, there were times when people had to cohabitate with rats and mice that often chewed on paper. So, to prevent information from getting completely lost, people created margins. This way, texts were moved closer to the middle of pages and remained unharmed by rodents. Hmm, perhaps this is where to digest information came from. And what about those tiny holes at the bottom of airplane windows? They have an extremely important function of regulating the air pressure inside the cabin. In other words, they help planes fly high up in the sky. Big responsibility, right? By the way, tray tables on an airplane are the germiest places inside the entire cabin. Studies showed that the trays had eight times the amount of germs on the toilet flush button. Now, how about we cut a commercial airplane in half and see what's inside? Well, it would look more or less like this. Rows of seats on top and everything else that needs to be stored at the bottom. I'm talking about passengers' luggage, emergency supplies, parts of the wing system, and so on. Moving on to bowling balls. Yes, I know it's a clumsy transition. Anyway, have you ever wondered what the insides of a bowling ball look like? If you have cut a professional ball in two, 
you'll see a familiar shape. Look closely, do you see it? Doesn't that look like the logo of Brightside? Anyway, professional bowling balls are different from the ones in your local bowling alley. That's because they're designed to make fancy moves. They actually have some really complex engineering inside. They're shaped to help skilled professionals get more strikes. The weight of professional bowling balls is designed to be projected inward as they travel down the bowling lane. This makes it harder for them to get into the gutters on the sides of the lane. Speaking of balls, let's take a look inside a baseball. To make it light and aerodynamic, producers use several different layers. Starting from the core, we have a cork center enveloped by black rubber. Then there's a layer of red rubber followed by two or three alternating layers of wool yarn. After that, there's a visible white leather cover and that beautiful red seam on the side, stitching it all together. And what if you had x-ray vision and managed to look inside a human bone? Ooh, spooky! I'd say what calls most attention is this spiderweb-like situation at the center of the bone. In reality, it's a highly condensed and complex structure of nerves that you have inside your bones. Aren't you lucky? Now, I've got a riddle for you. What is round can be found near the ocean and looks like an aerial view of the Guggenheim Museum in New York City, the one that's made almost entirely of ramps. If you said a nautilus shell, hey, then you guessed right. A nautilus is a shellfish whose house you can find in countless souvenir stores near the beach. It's made up of two layers, a matte white outer layer and an iridescent white inner layer. And if you were to cut it in half, it would look very similar to the insides of the Guggenheim Museum. Aloe leaves are good for healing purposes and also for hydration. But if you managed to look inside of an aloe leaf, the image you'd see would be satisfying and very relaxing. Who hasn't dreamed of a pool filled with jelly? Now, there seems to be nothing more mundane and regular than a tube of toothpaste. But you wouldn't think so if you cut open a tube that contains several colors. Now, there have been speculations that the insides of such a toothpaste tube might be divided by barriers so that the stripes don't mix. But if you cut it in half, you'll see that it has only one interior chamber. As it happens, there's a lot of science behind the making of striped toothpaste. According to a specialist, they have to ensure that the paste in all the stripes has the same physical properties. This way, the colors are naturally prevented from mixing with one another. That's why, if you tear a tube open, you'll see something that looks like several slices of pizza in different colors. If you open your closet, you're bound to find at least a few wooden hangers. Usually, they're made of cedar wood, which is a natural moth repellent. So, cedar hangers actually protect your clothes from moth infestation. For some people, more than others, eyeliner is an everyday must. Boy, isn't it! But did you know that back in ancient Egyptian times, both men and women used coal eyeliners to protect their eyes from the sun's glare? Way to go for the Egyptians for figuring that out! Now, if I could just learn to walk like one… Normally, we use headrests for the purpose of, well, resting our heads, right? Well, not only! As it turns out, headrests can be easily removed from the seats and used to break car windows in case of emergencies. Now, this one is a trick very few people know about. You probably place your doormat horizontally, like most of us do. But doormats serve the purpose of absorbing dirt from the soles of your shoes before you enter your home. So, for this function to work as it's meant to, the best way to place a doormat is vertically. This way, you take more steps on the top of the doormat before entering your house. And last but not least, now I don't want to be accusatory here, but you have probably been vacuuming your house the wrong way, and I can prove it. Most people just vacuum floors and carpets in one direction or move the brush back and forth several times, thinking they've got all the dust out. But according to cleaning professionals, the best way to vacuum is in rows, 
First, you go forward with the brush until you arrive at the end of the row. Then, you fluff the carpet up and move back down along the same row, gathering the dust that wasn't collected in the first sweep. Talk about efficient cleaning. On the other hand, my idea of house cleaning is to sweep the room with a glance. Hey, I don't want to disturb that protective layer of dust. Most kitchen shears have metal plier-like teeth in the middle, between the handle grips. They can help you crack nuts, grab shells, and release other tough products. You can also open jars and bottles, or remove herb stems with their help. You can keep your cold meals cold and your food fresh by making a DIY ice pack. Take a sponge and fill it with water. Then put it in a plastic bag and leave it in the freezer. Once the sponge is frozen, it'll stay this way for a long time. Keep in mind that you should use a watertight bag and a fresh sponge. If you turn over a Tupperware container, you'll see some symbols. They'll inform you if you can put the container in the dishwasher, if it can be microwaved or frozen. You may even find out how you can recycle the thing. Staplers actually have two modes, not just one. There's a metal plate on the lower part of the device, which helps bend the staples inward after they've pierced the paper. What many people don't know is that you can turn this plate around to switch from the staple mode to the pinning one. The pinning setting is for temporary fastening. The staples bend outward, making them easier to remove when necessary and damaging the paper less, too. When you take a sip from a coffee cup closed with a lid, the air pressure inside the cup drops. That's why the air from the outside tries to push into the cup. The tiny hole on the lid allows some air to enter this way, and the liquid can go out of the main hole more smoothly. It's often hard to figure out how much detergent you need to clean your laundry well, but not go overboard. Pay attention to the cap of your detergent. It usually has a marker indicating how much product you need to add to your laundry. Or there might be an instruction on the bottle. It'll let you know how to measure the detergent. You can use most screwdrivers together with a wrench to create more torque. Just place the wrench over the handle of the screwdriver. This way, you'll need to apply a lot less force than before. You'll also be able to get to hard-to-reach areas more easily. The hole in a ruler can be useful if you want to hang the device on a hook. You can also place a pencil tip in this hole if you need to draw a perfect circle. Coffee stirring sticks have holes in them because those help reduce the resistance from your drink. This way, they can stir sugar much more effectively. Such a design also makes these plastic sticks tougher and prevents them from bending in hot water. And since stirring sticks are partially hollow, less plastic is used during their production. Some boxes of chocolates have little dents in between the holes for candies. If you push such a dent, the chocolates surrounding it will pop out of their compartments. The small bumps on the F and J keys on the keyboard help people find the right keys without looking down. It's especially convenient for those who use touch typing. The rumble strips on the sides of the road are placed there to alert drivers who doze off behind the wheel. When their tires move over these strips, the noise and vibration work like an alarm clock. The black grate on a microwave is called a Faraday shield. It contains the electromagnetic energy inside the oven and protects the exterior from radiation. The grate also speeds up the heating process. Bottles have long necks so that your drink stays cool longer. Hold the neck, not the bottle itself, and your drink won't warm up. Dimples on the surface of a golf ball increase its lift and reduce air resistance. It means that the ball can go further. The dimples don't have to be spherical. They can be hexagonal or have any other shape. There's a tab on the bottom of your rearview mirror. If you push it back during nighttime driving, the headlights of the car moving behind yours won't be so blinding. If you're driving during the day, pull the tab forward. You can peel an orange more effectively if you cut into the peel at the top and bottom first. Then make a slit on one side and just pull the peel open. Headrests in cars are detachable. You can use one to break the windows if you get stuck in your vehicle. 
but by smashing the glass, you can easily hurt yourself. So, try sliding one of the prongs in between the window pane and the door. Then pull the headrest towards yourself. The window will shatter. But hey, I'd try the door lock first. Solo cups used at barbecue parties can help you measure liquids. The bottom line equals one ounce. The second line means you've poured five ounces. And the third line means 12 ounces. Sneakers were originally invented for basketball players. And since they needed to lace their shoes in the most comfortable way, side holes were invented. Those helped players lace their sneakers in any way they liked, and they accommodate anyone's foot. Little buttons on your jeans are called rivets. They were originally placed there to prevent the seams from ripping. In the past, mostly miners and other workers wore jeans. That's why this item of clothing had to be particularly durable. And even though these days jeans aren't under such stress, the tradition of using rivets still remains. A big toothy spoon comes in handy when you need to pull your spaghetti out of the pot. And the hole in the middle of this spoon can help you measure portions. One portion equals as many dry noodles as you can fit into the hole. Sometimes, pre-rinsing dishes may lead to your dishwasher cleaning them worse than it could. Special sensors inside modern dishwashers can perceive how dirty your plates are. And after that, they send a controlled jet of water to wash all that stuff off. The only thing you're actually supposed to do is remove solid food from your plates and stack them up properly. Ribbed ketchup containers that they give you at fast food restaurants can get a bit bigger. Just pull the ribs outward and your container will house much more sauce. While using a plunger on a clogged kitchen sink or toilet, make sure you've got the right tool. If it has a standard bowl-shaped rubber head, it's perfect for flat surfaces, such as a sink or a tub. But the one designed for toilet pipes has a narrower head. The hole near the rim of your bathroom sink is there to prevent overflows. Thanks to it, all excess water goes into the siphon. Plus, it helps your sink drain faster. The hole gives the air gathered in the siphon somewhere to escape. The hole in a lollipop stick can save your life. If the stick gets stuck in someone's mouth, the hole will prevent this person from choking. But the original reason for it is to simply not let the candy run off the stick. During production, the liquid treat is poured on top of the stick. The stick is hollow inside, so the candy gets inside it from both the top and the side, through that exact hole. And when it gets solid, it keeps perfectly on the plastic tube. Most padlocks have a tiny hole on the bottom. It's needed to drain water from the lock and avoid corrosion. By the way, it's the best place to lubricate a padlock. Just put a drop of oil there and the key will turn much easier. If you don't see a hole on the bottom, the lock is supposed to be used inside. Instead of opening a banana at the stem, turn it upside down and peel it from the bottom. It opens much more easily this way. A utility knife can serve you much longer than you might think. Look at the blade carefully. It's made of parallel sections. Once the knife gets blunt, you should break off the top section. You can do it with the help of the cap you'll find at the bottom of the instrument. In no time, you'll have a sharp blade again. The stripes on headphone jacks keep the wires insulated from one another. One stripe means the headset has a mono signal. Two stripes indicate you'll have stereo sound. And three stripes means the headset also has a built-in microphone. You can usually find some silica gel in bags, shoes, and many other things you buy. This gel absorbs excess moisture. Don't throw it away. Every time your shoes get wet, put some packets of silica gel inside them. It's very convenient to use bread tags to organize your cords. Just take a bread tag and several cords and clip them together. You can also write notes on these tags and use them as reminders. If you've ever gotten bored while waiting in a car like I have, you might have played around with a headrest. Yep, you can pull them off and they'll come right off relatively easily. It seems useless at first, but that's something you'll want to do if you're ever trapped in a car and need to break a window to get out, like I do. Even a box of aluminum foil has its secret. On the side of the box, you can see a small tab you can push in. 
So simple, but that's what actually holds the roll of foil in place. This tab makes it way easier to unroll a sheet and tear it off without any frustration. Ever wondered why gripping a certain tool, handle, or even a pen kind of feels more secure when it's coated with a rubbery material? The keratin of the outer layer of the human skin is rough and stiff at a small scale. So let's say you have a polished metal or glass which is stiff but also a smooth and impenetrable surface. When you encounter that, the actual contact area is small, as is the friction at the beginning. Your sweat pores secrete moisture, which is why the keratin gets hydrated and becomes softer. Because of that, it requires many seconds for the contact area to increase to the same value it reaches almost right away with some soft materials like rubber. This mechanism might be used by our tactile senses when we want to identify materials. Now, the pom-poms on beanies and other hats have their purpose. And it's not just to look cute and fluffy. Well, at least they did have a purpose. One of the theories says French sailors used to wear hats with pom-poms so they wouldn't hurt their heads on the ship when the weather got rough. Yup, the ceilings of the ship were really low. When the waves were too big, bang, you could easily hit your head on the ceiling. So the pom-poms came in handy. Now, they're just a cute addition to our winter caps. That mysterious drawer under the oven, the one where you keep all your kitchen gear you just don't know where else to put? Well, you used it well in that case, but the drawer was originally designed for keeping your meals warm, at least until you're ready to serve them. And that space under your lower cabinets that protrude slightly and can't be lifted? This area is also called a toe kick. It's the reason why you can stand closer to the counter while cooking. Also, the doors of the cabinets are off the ground, so they'll swing over your toes. The cabinet under the sink isn't for storage either. Maybe that's where you keep your cleaning products, but its real purpose is to give you access if your sinks leak and you need to do some plumbing work. That weird little hole at the top of a lollipop stick you can see after finishing a candy is not a whistle. Mm -mm. It has something to do with the manufacturing process. When pouring hot molten caramel into a mold, some of it will seep into this mysterious hole and harden. This way, the candy will stay on the stick and won't fall off. Keyboard letters aren't just randomly arranged the way they are. The first keyboard ever made belonged to the typewriter. Typists eventually got so good at their job, they started typing too quickly. So the key arms would get crosswired at some point and stuck. That's why manufacturers had to make the order of keys more random to intentionally slow down typists so they could keep the machine running. Do you like to let those brushes on the side of the escalators in malls polish your shoes? Believe it or not, that's not their main gig. The bristles are there for safety. People used to get their bags and clothes stuck in those escalators when they would stand too close to the sides. These nylon bristles kind of play with people's minds and they keep their feet away from the escalator skirt panels and avoid accidents. Most people assume bobby pins have curves for fashion, which is why they mostly place it in their hair with the wavy side up. But those little waves are actually there to catch the underlying bulk of hair and grip the pin into place. So the wavy side should go down. You've probably noticed measuring tapes mostly come with a metal stub that ends with a small slot. If your hands are full of stuff, simply hang the slot on a nail for measurement. If you take a closer look, you'll see the stuff is a little bit serrated on one side. This means you can use it to mark the points, so you don't even need a pencil. If you spend a lot of time in planes, you've probably noticed that little hole located at the bottom of the window. Nothing to be nervous about, it's what keeps us safe while flying high. It's something called a bleed hole. You can see right there in the middle of the pane of the three window panes that actually protect passengers from the outside pressure. This hole may be tiny, but it takes all that pressure off the outer one. The hole also gradually exposes it to cabin pressure, which helps with fixing pressure imbalances on the windows, if there are any. There's a number 57 staring at you from the middle of the Heinz ketchup bottle forever. According to the company, only 11% of people are aware the number really has nothing to do with the product label. It's actually a sweet spot where you can tap to get the sauce onto the plate. So, next time you want some ketchup, there's no need to bang the bottom off. Just hit this spot. 
grooves on the bottom of cups are there to make cleaning them in the dishwasher more convenient. When you place your cups upside down, these grooves will allow the water to flow rather than stagnate. This way, the water won't spill onto your feet when you take the cups out. The grooves are there to allow cool air to flow beneath the cup, too. They also keep cups from cracking when they heat up after you pour hot beverages in. You probably noticed that little dot next to the camera on an iPhone and probably thought it was a flash. Nope, not a flash, but a microphone in charge of catching sounds when you're using the back camera. Next time you're looking for a quick bite and decide for fries at McDonald's, check that bendable flap near the top of the box. Some like to bend it towards the fries. That way, you can cover your fries up and keep them warm. But if you're not that patient, you can flip the flap backward and basically turn it into a makeshift plate for your fries. Just bend it down firmly enough. You don't want it to spring back up and spread the sauce all over you. Take it from me, it's messy. In the 1970s, people didn't want toothpaste just to keep their mouths healthy, but also to freshen their breath. Aquafresh decided to answer that call, so they added a blue stripe to their product. Since consumers started paying more attention to their teeth and gums, the company added a third red stripe to their paste. The paste now has three functions – freshening, cleaning, and plaque control. And yes, solid white toothpaste can offer the same benefits, but brands continue to add stripes to their paste anyway. Speaking of toothpaste, do you know those colors on the bottom of tubes? The colors don't mean anything in particular. They're there to help in the manufacturing by telling light sensors where the end of the tube is. Thanks to it, the machine can cut and seal the tube properly. Hand sanitizers are commonplace nowadays, and you can apply them in many other ways besides just cleaning your hands. It also works great when you want to remove stains from your clothes. Sanitizer breaks up oily, greasy spillages and does a great job as a degreaser. You can even use it as a deodorant if you get caught out on a hot day. The bottom of the bottle mostly has a small, odd-shaped notch. It's called a deco lug, and without it, your bottle wouldn't look the way it does now. Such bottles are mass-produced in factories using machinery, and each of them looks the same. Since plastic bottles mostly needed artwork on them, manufacturers wanted to make sure the artwork always gets printed in the same position for each bottle. So they invented the deco lug, short for decorating lug. It actually holds each bottle at the same orientation in the machine that applies the artwork. Without it, workers would have to watch the whole process and adjust the bottles by hand. 